Hi Cindy, great to get together with you again today. Um, wondering if you could talk us through machine learning in today's video and how it's changing the way insurers do business first of all. You know, machine learning is I think one of the, the more innovative areas where we're seeing the, the insurance industry really embrace. Uh, we've got the opportunity now to actually leverage machine learning, which is really different than traditional statistical GLM modeling that we've done in the insurance industry. And it's also moving beyond just the actuarial community, is how do we use machine learning to look at new data sources, whether it's uh, social media items to be able to come up with customer profiles, next best actions, recommendation engines, and then also within you know claims frequency and severity, looking at the models different, being able to use neural network analysis, which is kind of a really a way of you know, machine learning enables that type of ability where, um, you know, traditionally, you know, we're so used to using rows and columns and reports, and machine learning is really helping to understand relationships that you previously haven't been able to discover with traditional methods. Great, thank you, Cindy. So let's let's get into more specifics. How is machine learning and general advances in data analytics changing the way insurers do things like price, risk, um, estimate losses, and monitor fraud? So the, the opportunity that we have here is, you know, I, I a lot of times say that the insurance industry, we typically capture in structured format maybe 10 to 15% of the data that we actually have available to us. So we're wanting to be able to use more of the real-time information, what's going on in the world when it comes to uh, catastrophes and being able to look at that type of data. So when you're thinking about price, you're thinking about, you know, risk, you're thinking about the underwriting, it's using those new data sources. And so to use those new data sources like weather information, uh, political, social data that's coming available, climate data, um, if it's, you know, we're talking about telematics type data, it's very unstructured streaming type data and machine, and it's, you know, somewhat almost not possible to, you know, humanly consume all of that data and information. So machine learning actually allows you to still use your, some of your traditional models but really move beyond that and be able to look at much more data, to be able to look at that unstructured, look at that streaming data. So within you know, um, an area within claims frequency and severity, um, and also with the area of fraud, is typically you need to look, you know, our traditional ways are doing business rules. And business rules are very error prone and you get a lot of what we call anomalies. Um, and using machine learning, you can use the capabilities that enable uh, the neural network analysis, so the graphing. So you can start to see relationships. Uh, so fraud, many times, and um, is you know, it's just not rule driven. It's being able to look at the data correlations and being able to visually see those data correlations through machine learning or a component called um, within Spark called uh, GraphX that really allows you to see the neural network analysis that we need for fraud to be able to look at new data relationships that we can't use in traditional methods. And, and talking of traditional methods now, you know, we know from our experience with numerous customers that the technology is one part, but obviously the cultural change mm -hmm. is, is another. Um, d could you speak a little bit to, you know, how much insurers that you speak to are aware of the impact of that change? Is there any resistance from a cultural perspective and how that's being managed? You know, the areas where I'm starting to, to first see it um, is, you know, and, and you do see some resistance in the actuarial community because, you know, we're... Um, you know, we're so used to our traditional being able to use SAS, being able to use GLM models and so forth. But what's interesting is now as we have, um, you know, younger individuals coming into the insurance market um, and what's being taught at the academic level is looking at machine learning, looking at artificial intelligence. How can we actually use those? So while there is some resistance, I'm also seeing a very rapid um, adoption and interest in using machine learning. Um, and again, it's beyond just, you know, data, um, there's so much operational data, uh, looking at marketing data. Um, and, you know, we see marketing analysts starting to use machine learning for them to understand, you know, customer journeys, customer relationships, uh, next best actions that they can take. And a lot of that has to happen through machine learning because that's a lot of, um, you know, you want to be able to use uh, voice recordings that are coming from your call centers. And that's data that we've not been able to tap into mm. before. And so machine learning really allows us that um, opportunity. Lots of new possibilities. Yes, very so, much. so one of the more specific questions that I've heard is, is can the use of machine learning actually deliver a decline in fraud rates? What's your, what's your perspective on that? 
So in the past, we've always said, you know, fraud, you're just trying to deter fraud. You're trying to minimize fraud. Um, and, and there's two types of fraud. Uh, there's hard fraud and there's soft fraud. Um, and the hard fraud, which is, you know, really kind of that, um, the crime related, this is where the machine learning and the neural network analysis allows us to actually see that. And I've been working with a lot of uh, folks in the special investigation units, so the fraud units um, within um, insurance companies. And if you providing them a tool to look at all these data relationships as opposed to having to go out and go to you know certain areas, what type of social media might I be able to use? What type of data within the claim folder can I see? And you graphically bring that to them because their mind thinks in networks because typically you're looking for a fraud network. Mm -hmm. So um, I definitely see the opportunity. Uh, we are seeing um, organizations you know, really start to leverage it first most in the, in the fraud area. So um, I do believe it's gonna have an impact. I don't know what the magnitude of the impact is, but you know, as we start to see this, we'll be able to see some case studies. Great stuff, Cindy. And the final question is really about the application of, of machine learning and whether you can provide us with a, a technical picture of, of the use of machine learning when combating insurance fraud and how it's being applied in the real world today. So when we think about um, you know, customer relationships um, in the insurance industry outside of the, the fraud and the claims area, um, is also looking at director and officer type policies, looking at uh, business disruption insurance, because you want to start to see the relationships um, of the insured's environment. So who are they doing business with? And so when you start to look at that and then look at your entire portfolio, because you know sometimes you can look at just an individual risk, but really we want to look at the graphing and the, the machine learning across our entire portfolio. So that gives us great opportunity to understand, um, you know, update our risk appetite, um, you know, by understanding the, the networks, uh, looking for potential premium leakage that we maybe didn't understand data relationships before mm -hmm. to accurately price um, and to actually rate policies. So, you know, there's many areas, there's, there's claims, there's um, the, the underwriting, the risk assessment, the pricing, on the customer relationships. Those are really the, the top areas of opportunity for the industry. Great stuff. Cindy, thank you so much for talking us through that. As you know, we're seeing a lot of um, conversations and interest from our customers in terms of not just the technological application of machine learning, but the business value they can get. So I appreciate you taking the time to talk Thanks. us through. Thank you.